Today, we're going to recap the movie Bloody Hell, a great comedy horror film released in 2020. Right in the opening, we witness an incident taking place in Finland. A young girl named Alia is being pursued by a group of men through the forest. Surprisingly, these men are actually members of her own family. Desperate to escape, Alia leaps into a lake, but the men catch her just before the worst happens. Years later, Rex, a former military man, waits in line at a bank in the United States. While it's unclear why he's there, it soon becomes evident that he's there to meet Maddie, a bank teller. Their conversation is abruptly interrupted when the bank is suddenly raided by robbers, who swiftly eliminate a security guard. The calm atmosphere instantly transforms into a chaotic situation. Amidst the chaos, Rex notices a gun inside a woman's bag. However, the tense scenario paralyzes the woman. Rex, on the other hand, shows peculiar behavior, apparently suppressing his emotions to avoid acting impulsively. Unexpectedly, the woman's bag is hurled and lands right in Rex's lap. The scene then suddenly shifts to a courtroom without clarifying the preceding events. We see that Rex is being sued by the judge for eliminating all the robbers during the bank incident. In spite of saving numerous lives and being hailed by many as a hero, he is sentenced to eight years in prison without probation. Eight years later, Rex is released from prison and stares at a magazine featuring his own face on it. Even eight years later, the magazine still portrays him as a hero due to his courageous actions that day. Following his release, Rex becomes the center of attention everywhere he goes, being constantly pursued by reporters. This naturally puts Rex on edge, and at this moment we notice that he talks to a materialized version of his own consciousness. It soon becomes evident that his alter ego possesses enhanced comical and emotional traits. Sensing he can no longer bear their presence, Rex rises abruptly and hurls his desk at the entire group. However, it is merely his imagination providing an outlet for his emotions. Despite Rex being widely hailed as a hero, there are still some individuals who dislike his valiant endeavors and consider him a deranged fool. Shortly after, Rex seeks out his friend and mentions being done with his current life. He claims all the attention he is getting is overwhelming. As a result, he decides to leave the US and move to Finland. Rex's desire to go to Finland is very logical, as he once shot a spitball in prison and it happened to land in Finland. The scene then shifts to a forest, where we witness a man being pursued by a group of individuals. The man is forcefully seized by what seems to be a creature, emitting an unsettling sound. Back to Rex, we find him at the airport, where he is once again subjected to someone filming him. He soon notices a husband and wife who are keeping a watchful eye on him. As the commotion intensifies and more people start recording him, Rex becomes increasingly irritated and eventually decides to retreat to the restroom. To his surprise, the husband from the strange couple is already there, creepily gazing at him while he urinates. Upon Rex's return to his seat, the weird smile of the couple's wife sends chills down his spine. Upon arriving in Finland, Rex waits for a taxi to drive him to his destination. Meanwhile, a taxi driver observes him from a distance and swiftly cuts through the line when it's Rex's turn to board a car. Once inside the taxi, the driver releases a gas and puts on a mask, causing Rex to lose consciousness. In a seemingly ordinary household, a family is seen preparing dinner. However, the twist occurs when Rex is found captured and tied up in the basement of their house. To his dismay, Rex finds himself bound and missing one of his legs. As he is about to scream, an individual comes from behind and silences him. It turns out that person is Rex's conscience, advising him to remain silent. Following this, Rex's conscience takes on the role of expressing his emotions through screams for what is past. In fact, his alter ego appears to possess greater intelligence and more sarcastic tendencies than Rex himself. Rex's conscience then concludes that the culprits responsible for his current situation are the peculiar husband and wife from the airport. While Rex laments his condition, his conscience cannot bear it and begins contemplating ways to escape. Due to the tightness of the bindings on his hands, his conscience devises an alternative plan to ensure survival. According to him, if the perpetrators suddenly appear, Rex must pretend to be unconscious. Upon noticing several bicycles nearby, Rex's alter ego also deduces that the kidnappers are a family. As most family members have already gone to bed, the youngest child, Ollie, remains awake and curious about their current captive. Rex, who hasn't had enough time to untie the rope, attempts to do so using his teeth. At the same time, Ollie decides to venture into the basement, where Rex is being held. Regrettably, Rex's efforts are not effective due to the thickness of the rope. 
When the young boy enters the room, Rex immediately feigns unconsciousness. Rex then realizes that whoever entered is merely a child, prompting him to devise a plan involving the child as a bargaining chip for his escape. As he attempts to persuade the kid and Ollie gets closer, Rex delivers a masterful kick to his face with his amputated leg, soon immobilizing him with both his thighs. Soon after, Ollie's sister, Alia, becomes aware of her little brother's absence and decides to search for him in the basement. It becomes clear that Alia is the young girl who attempted to flee from several men at the beginning of the movie. Upon seeing her, Rex threatens to attack the boy's neck if Alia makes any attempts on his life. However, Rex's concern for his own safety causes him to unintentionally release Ollie, so his sister grabs him and leaves the basement. When Ollie is discovered unconscious in the bedroom, the family decides to take him to the hospital. Before leaving, the mother slaps Alia, thinking she is the one who harmed her youngest son. It becomes evident that Alia is different from her family since she never accepted their ways. This could be good for Rex, especially when Alia unexpectedly brightens with a smile and envisions herself wedded to him, indicating her attraction towards him. While her family is still at the hospital, Alia goes to the basement to take care of Rex's injured leg. During the encounter, Alia is quite mindful of his wound, carefully handling his leg. She then begins telling the story of her family's initiation into capturing individuals and using them as dinner for her elder brother, Petit. Since his birth, Petit has been plagued by a disorder that compels him to crave and consume human flesh. He even bit their father as an infant. From that moment on, Alia's family began capturing people to try and satiate his enormous hunger. Night after night, Alia hated being part of that family, and she made several attempts to escape their clutches. However, they always managed to track her down. Eventually, she was confined to a wooden cage constructed by her father. After finishing the story, Alia starts to empathize with Rex, setting the knife down on the floor close to him. While Rex gets the knife and attempts to cut the rope, Alia's three brothers suddenly appear, suspecting that Rex may have hurt their little brother. In response, Rex pretends to still be unconscious, even when they hit him, so he successfully deceives them. Before going upstairs, they take notice of Rex's already bandaged leg, indicating Alia was there. When they fail to find her in her room, they return to the basement and run into her. She is then carried upstairs by her brothers. In the meantime, her uncle gives Rex a shot of a mysterious substance that makes him laugh and then takes him out. The movie then transports us eight years back, when Rex bravely confronted the robbers at the bank. Rex skillfully took care of all the robbers present, one by one. He started with the gun found in the woman's purse and snatched the shotguns from the criminals as he eliminated them. His actions earned him the status of a heroic figure among the bank's visitors. Ultimately, when Rex went to rescue Maddie, the robber was petrified by the fact that he held no regard for casualties. Once Maddie was freed, Rex, driven by his own ego, shot down the robber, inadvertently causing his shotgun to fire into a nearby cupboard. Unfortunately, a bank employee had sought refuge there, so she lost her life right away. Her death caused Rex to be sentenced to the eight-year imprisonment we already know about. To make matters worse, Maddie, who had been saved by him, chose to terminate their relationship due to his lengthy sentence. Back in the present, Rex suddenly regains consciousness, only to discover that the family's uncle is in the process of playing with his other leg. In a swift act of self-defense, Rex delivers him a kick and knocks him down. The uncle then heads upstairs to get another shot for him. Seizing the opportunity, Rex desperately tries to sever the rope binding his hands using the knife provided by Alia. When the uncle returns, Rex promptly presents the guy with a knife to the ear canal. Wasting no time, he embarks on a search for tools and weapons essential for his escape. After going through lots of stuff, he manages to get what he needs. He uses a golf club attached to his leg and strives to ascend to the upper floor. Several minutes later, he gets upstairs, and his alter ego urges him to take Alia with him. Thus, Rex departs from the premises, mulling over the words of his conscience once again. Some time later, the parents return from the hospital. They are greeted with shock upon encountering bloodstains at their doorstep, which indicate Rex's escape. The mother screams upon finding the uncle's body awake in their children. Fearing that Rex will contact the authorities, they make a plan to leave the house and go somewhere else for a while. Unbeknownst to them, Rex lies in wait beneath the table. All of a sudden, he systematically begins eliminating them one by one using a nail gun. Rex goes total crazy and literally nails everyone. Moments later, he turns the table and proceeds to fight the rest of the family. 
As Rex attempts to target the mother, he runs out of nails, so he simply kicks her with the golf club attached to his shorter leg. As one of the sons is about to attack Rex, the American quickly throws a knife into his body, taking him down. As the mother recovers next to the wooden cage, Alia seizes the opportunity and proceeds to eliminate her with a rope. When Rex thinks they are finally free, a loud growl reminds him that Petit is still alive. Eventually, the elder brother walks through the corridor with his monstrous frame. They soon engage in a fierce fight, during which Rex manages to secure a grip on the refrigerator door. When he does so, he sees a part of his own leg inside. A glimmer of satisfaction appears on his face as he realizes that Petit hasn't consumed his right leg. Seizing the moment, he snatches his leg and thrusts his own limb into the cannibal's throat. Finally free, Rex escorts Alia to the United States, where they choose to live together. On a certain evening, Rex and Alia socialize at a venue with some friends. It is clear that one of the girls displays an interest in him, which makes Alia jealous. It is revealed that Alia also has a sort of alter ego, whose thoughts of eliminating the woman entertain her. The movie ends with Ali, who has recuperated from his injuries and displays intentions of avenging his family. Thanks for watching. If you like our content, Please like the video and don't forget to subscribe.